<laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today, we are going to talk about archives and website integrations in Aspen Discovery. And my name is Morgan. I am an Aspen Implementation Specialist on the Aspen Discovery team. Um, I have been working in libraries since 2009. And before Bywater, I was a services librarian. So I'm often telling people during implementation that my enthusiasm and excitement for these features is genuine because I, so many times I wish that I had all the features that Aspen has when I was a librarian. Um, just a little bit of a background about Aspen Discovery. Um, Aspen is an open source product um, and it's been in development for about 12, 13 years now. So it has a really solid, um, stable history. Um, and I love open source products for libraries because I think they work really well with the mission of libraries, you know, the free and open access to information. Um, I don't think that should just apply to library users. I think that should also apply to library staff. Um, so I, yeah, really love the open source mission. I'm excited to share some of these features today. So before we dive into the content today, um, I just want to really quick go over Aspen Discovery's goals because this does guide everything that we do on the Aspen team. Um, and we did revise these goals late last year. So um, if you've seen our webinars before, um, these might actually be new goals to you. <laughs> so first, um, we want to create a unified experience through deep integration with all library technologies. Um, our integrations over the years have moved beyond eBooks to ensure that everything the library offers can be discovered from the library catalog in some way. And as the years go on, um, Aspen will continue to push towards our goal of making sure that patrons can find everything in one place and that no one thinks the library is just books. Um, second goal is to maximize user engagement with the library. We strive to provide the right context for displaying resources, um, such as showing titles available with uh, while you wait when you go to place a hold um, or the explore more um, in the search results. Um, and not only that, but Aspen provides librarians with tools to create to increase user engagement themselves. Um, so that's with browse categories, collection spotlights, placards, et cetera. Number three is we want to connect every user with a personalized and accessible library home base. So, you know, as <laughs> services progress, everyone is used to that personalized touch everywhere they go online. And we don't want Aspen to be any different. Um, the online library experience needs to be able to adjust to the needs of and interests of the individual user. So we build in features in Aspen to maintain accessibility standards so they can see the text, they can view it from, um, you know, hear it from a screen reader, et cetera. Um, and we also want to allow you to add personalized browse categories that are tailored to logged in users. So we have browse categories that will show them lists and um, their save searches and such. Finally, we want to empower library administrators to customize and expand Aspen. Um, and I think that, you know, adding uh, open archives and website indexing um, is a part of that, along with the other goals, but um, this, I think it really ties into number four. Um, Aspen works really great out of the box, especially because it has to be ILS agnostic. It has to work with so many different systems. Um, but we're constantly tinkering to make sure that all the default configuration uh, is just better and better all the time. Um, but Aspen has also always been highly configurable. Uh, we want to ensure that libraries can dream big dreams for how their catalogs work and then make those dreams a reality. So I'm going to exit out of my view here if I can. <laughs> All right. Did my screen sharing stop? Is that what it said? All right. Let me go ahead and share it again. 
desktop three. Because we're going to do some fun stuff. I'm going to show you some examples of both um, open archives integrations and website indexing. So let me go ahead and go to our first example here. Um, we bring up Uinta County Libraries a lot <laughs> because they have done so much with Aspen. Um, but we'll also see some other libraries as well. So in, in case you're totally new to this, um, the default search on Aspen catalogs is in library catalog, typically, and you can reset the default. But um, to get to the open archive search, um, it's in history and archives. So they have a lot of different integrations. They've integrated um, databases, events, et cetera. But history and archives is the link um, for the open archives integration. So I'm going to search for flood. And that will take us into the search results. Um, over on the side, you'll have this narrow your results column, just kind of how you see in the regular Aspen search results for the catalog. Um, Aspen is also populating this for you based on the metadata that we're able to pull in. Um, so you can filter by the specific collection. Um, there's also the type of resource it is. Um, there are different subjects that you can filter by. And of course, everything that's coming up right now is it's based on my current search of flood. So that's why we're seeing some of those more relevant subjects there. Um, and I really, I mean, it's sad that this happened, but I like that we're able to see pictures. Um, there's some pretty wild flood footage there. So um, I'm going to click on any of those, and it's it will take you right out to that resource um, on their archive site. So that has all the descriptors and data that goes along with it. But we can preview that image and zoom in on it um, and do whatever we like from there. All right. Oh, and Bill has linked uh, to that in the chat. So thank you so much, for Bill, for being my helper. <laughs> all right. And you'll see that there is some information as well with the records, um, as well as a description. So kind of depends on what data we're able to get, but it's generally doing a really good job of getting the pertinent for information in the search results. Next, I am going to hop over to one of our SWAN libraries. And again, I'm gonna go to their history archives and I'm going to search for Atwood. And this brings me a couple other results. Um, I really like the description of these. This is a really cool, the Atwood Inn, really awesome photograph there with the description. Um, so again, it's once you click on that resource from the open archives result, it's going to take you out directly to that resource. And once again, Bill has linked to this site um, if you want to explore and follow along yourself. And also notice down here that whenever we're doing a search in history and archives, um, sometimes there's this explore more box that comes up. So for those who aren't familiar with explore more, what Aspen is doing is um, it's building this little exploratory section anywhere, oops, anywhere that I um, search. So if I were to perform a search in uh, databases, in lists, in the catalog, um, where if I were to perform the same search of Atwood in any of those other search sources, if it brings back results, it's going to populate this explore more box with those results. So that's where that's coming from um, and why you, you see that sometimes. So. You don't have to do anything to configure that. Aspen is just automatically creating that and pulling in those um, different search sources for you. So it's helping you find more relevant content wherever you are. And that does appear not just in this search, but it will also appear in um, the catalog search as well. Next, um, I'm going to go to Burleson, Texas. And I wanted to show you that you don't even necessarily need to start by going to the history and archive search in order to discover and find these archives, because, I mean, 
<laughs> let's be real. A lot of patrons, they're just going to go to the search box and type in whatever they want. Um, and they may never click that drop down and explore all, all those other things. But luckily, Aspen has ways to um, promote these things and kind of nudge users into different directions, depending on what you um, are trying to promote. So if I just were to type in the regular catalog search local history, like if I didn't know that that other drop down existed, um, they have created a placard with a little, um, you know, nice preview image and some description about their um, Portal to Texas history history integration. Um, and this placard actually links you straight out to that resource, so it's taking you out of Aspen and directly to their um, newspaper collection archive, which. I, I spent a little bit going through some of the front pages of these newspapers, and um, I don't know, Bill, you might want to check some of these out for some new joke material because some of them have little joke sections. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, fun way to spend a Friday night or whatever. Um, so, yeah, of course, you can get to it straight from the placard that they've made, which I think is so cool. But if I were to go to History and Archives, um, that will allow you to search the archive from within Aspen first, and then you can um, click on one of those resources to go straight out to their newspaper. Love that. All right. So I'm going to point out a couple of things um, about the archive integrations. So um, I wanted to mention that the archive integration utilizes OAIPMH. Um, and what that stands for is Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Um, so if you're not quite sure if the archive you're interested in integrating into Aspen um, complies with OAIPMH, I would just reach out to your support person um or you know at that company and ask if they comply with that but i will say that a lot of our libraries um, that use the open archives integration they have either content dm or omeka but we do have other archives that are not content dm or omeka um, that we're able to incorporate with but i just wanted to point that out because that is important for this integration so I'm going to walk you through how to set that up in Aspen. So I'm going to go to our train site. Let's see here. Not Aspen test, Aspen train. Okay. So from Aspen, what you'll do, of course, is you'll sign in um, with your administrator account. Um, you'll need to make sure that the module is turned on. So chances are, if you're already in um, implementation or if you're starting, uh, we've probably turned it on for you if we knew like from the get-go that you planned to incorporate open archives. Um, but if it's not turned on, uh, meaning that you can't find the open archives section in your administration module, um, you'll just need to enable it in system administration and modules. So once you turn that on, um, next you'll want to make sure that you have the right permissions. And Bill has very helpfully linked in the chat um, on our help center. We have instructions for how to set this up too. So if I'm talking too fast or not covering all the points, do not worry because our amazing help center at help.aspendiscovery.org um, if you click on integrations and then open archives, that will take you to the page that has all the instructions you'll need. Um, and of course, if you have questions about whether or not we can integrate, um, or if you're just not sure about any step of this process, please definitely submit a support ticket to us um, if you're in implementation or if you're live. So going back to Aspen administration, um, I'm going to go to the open archives and I'll click on collections. So you'll see in our little training site that there are already some collections set up, but I'm going to set up something brand new for you today. And first you're going to give it a name. So I have 
borrowed from <laughs> Knox County Public Library. Um, so they are lending me this collection today. I really love their Great Smoky Mountains photograph collection that they've integrated on their site. So I'm going to type that in. And next is the base URL of the archive. Now, this will depend on the type of archive it is. Um, for, I believe this is, I think this is Omega, or no, I think it's Content VM. I cannot remember. <laughs> but basically, um, on our help center, we walk you through some of the most common base URLs that you'll need. Um, so some it'll usually incorporate some reference to the OAI you know, OAI, PMH, et cetera. So I have that ready to go. Um, you can also specify a set name. So if you have a specific set of records from the archive that you want to include, um, you can put those set names in there. And just a little trick, um, I think you should probably be able to see this on um, the administrative end for whatever your archive service is. So when you're actually setting up the archives and ma managing those, um, I believe you'll be able to see that. Ah, Knox County's using content DM, thank you. But I'm gonna show you a little trick. So if you have your official archive URL, um, what you can add to the end to see the available sets is question mark verb equals list sets. Um, and this is how we're able to see the different sets, at least. So this is all the, um, the scary metadata stuff. Ooh. But you'll notice that there are these set names here. So this Smoky Mountains photograph collection is actually a part of a greater archive. So if we copy that set name, um, we'll be able to just have this set included with this archive. And that's a way that you can really kind of separate out the different archives. So um, when you're in the search results for archives, you'll be able to more easily see, okay, what, um, you know, which archive is this? So if I go back to Knox really quick, that's not, that's not the right one, discover, there we go. Extreme archives. Um, so you'll see here, they have split out um, the Great Smoky Mountains. Instead of it just being one ginormous archive, they have made a setting for each of these different sets. So I'm gonna go back to our settings here. Oops. And I'm going to plug in that set name for just this collection. Um, there is an available subjects here, but that's not going to populate until we have saved the settings and we've been able to pull in some of the data. So you'll be able to see all the available subjects for your archive. Um, and from there, if you only want to display um, results from certain subjects, you can enter those subjects in the subject filters box. And that will just narrow it down to only showing those subjects. Um, this box is if you um, are having trouble pulling in thumbnail images from your archive, and it depends on the archive and what you have added to it. Um, but there is a way to sometimes tell Aspen to look in the metadata and find those images if it's not pulling it in automatically. Um, but we do have some information about this on our help center if you need it. You could also set the frequency to fetch. So if it's an archive that isn't going to update a lot, you might set it to weekly or monthly or um, even longer, but I'm gonna set it to daily. Um, and of course you'll want to apply it to the libraries and locations that should have access to this resource. So I'm going to save and my setting is saved and it's going to take a minute probably to get that connection and to pull in the available subjects. Um, but what I'm going to do is if I go into Knox's settings really quick, I can show you what those subjects look like. Oops, they're a nice website. That's not where I want to go to right now, though. I'll go to their open archives. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's loaded and everything. So here's my Great Smoky Mountains.
And here is that list of available subjects that Aspen was able to pull in once the data started loading. So if I just wanted to show rock gardens for this archive, I could put in that subject filter. All right, and I'm going to switch to showing you some website indexing now. Um, but if you do have any questions about Open Archive so far, definitely um, let us know in the chat. So website indexing, um, I'm going to go to North Olympic Library System. Um, and again, just like with the um, History and Archives search source option, um, if you have website indexing set up, there will be this in the library website search source. So if I switch to searching in library website, um, you know, let's say I want to find a book group. I'm going to type in book group. Um, and that's searching the website that they've indexed. Um, and it's pulling up some results for book group. So if I'm interested in a book group, I can click on that link and it'll take you out to that page on their website. So right away, I see here are their book groups for the whole year. And I can join the Zoom meeting. I can see what they're reading. They have a really nice setup on their website. Um, they have some other results or rather different search sources here. So they have, if I do a blank search that will retrieve all possible results. So if I do that, I can see what other sites they have added. And it looks like they may have um, done some indexing of individual pages. And that can be helpful if you have a really big website um, and you only want certain things to show up in the library website search from Aspen, um, you can, really narrow things and fine tune things so that it's only searching certain pages or it's excluding um, different directories or, you know, things, uh, you know, it's excluding pages with something in that URL. Uh, so the settings do allow you to tweak and fine tune things and get the results how you want them to. Um, I'm also going to show you on, oops, MCPO. On Montgomery County's site. Um, I wanted to mention that for our libraries that have used the Web Builder, um, or maybe you're, you know, if you're using Web Builder just to add a resources page, so it's linking out to the different electronic resources and local resources you have, or if you're building your entire library website out of Aspen. Um, Aspen can also index the pages that you make with the web builder, um, including those web resources. So if I do a search, um, I can narrow it down to, you know, the library website. Um, well, that's not the right one. Let me do this. Aha. So they have some web builder pages, um, and these are all of the web resources that they've set up. So if you're searching for a resource um, or just, you know, searching for something and it comes up with um, a resource. So let's see if I search for career, what that would, what that would pull up. Yeah, so I'm searching for career, career resources. And right away you see here are some resources that were built in Aspen's web builder. So I could click on this. That will take you to the web resource page that they've created. And from there, you can read more about the resource um, and go directly to that resource. So the website indexing is both for internal Aspen pages with the web builder and for external pages. So your external library website, if you wish. Um, and it's pretty easy to set up website indexing as well. So if I go to our Aspen settings, um, conveniently, they're right next to each other. So I'll click on website indexing, click on settings. And I'm going to click add new. Just like the other setting, uh, you'll wanna give it a name. So I have borrowed um, another one of our live library partners, the Carnegie Stout Public Library. Um, you can give it a search category by default, it's library website, um, but, and that becomes the website type in the search. So you're not changing 
um, this up here, you're changing, here, let me show you where it is. So you're changing the name of the website type. So you could call this, um, depending on what you're indexing, it could be blog or um, libguides or what have you. So next, of course, you want to put in the site URL. And recently, um, I think it was last month's Aspen update, we have added the ability to index based on a site map. So um, that's usually uh, a site URL with .xml at the end. Um, you'll just want to make sure that it's actually in a sitemap format. Just because it's an XML file doesn't mean it's a sitemap. <laughs> I learned that recently myself. Um, so I'm going to plug in their site URL. There are some other regular expressions you can add to your settings um, to help Aspen find the page title and the description in the metadata. Um, I'll just leave it blank for now. And here is that section I was talking about where you can exclude various paths. Um, they have added a little fanciness to exclude URLs that have this tag directory in it. Um, so they don't want those to come up in their website search results. You can configure how many maximum pages to index, um, the frequency of updates for you know, how often Aspen tries to fetch new updates. And then, of course, to have it visible, you'll want to select your library and your locations. And once you save, um, you'll be able to check the indexing log and see when that starts indexing, which shouldn't be, take too long. And then once you add this and save it, it's going to create that in library website drop down. All right. Well, Morgan, we do have a question. Yeah. So on the web resources part said so was that a separate placard to link ah so for the web resources um that's actually it's not placards although i i personally think it's a great idea to make placards for everything too um, because users are going to be searching in the catalog so much um but it's actually in our web builder module so um right here you'll see there's the web builder um, and you're looking for web resources. So this allows you to add um, a different resource. So if I were to click add new, um, I could you know, give it a name like Mango Languages and the URL to their website. Um, you can upload a logo and there's a lot of different options for the teaser and description. Um, to show you a live site that has their web builder page or their web resources page really up and running. I'm going to switch over to Salina Public Library um, and they've linked to their web resources. So whenever you enter in a new resource, it automatically generates this resource page um, for you. So you're not even having to worry about setting up a web builder page at all. You're just entering in the resources you want featured here. Um, entering in the description and the links, and um, it sets it up for you. But all of these web resources, that's that's what I was referring to, they are searchable in the library website search. And let's see, another question um, from Felicia. It showed up when you did a search, correct? Does it only show up if you have it linked? Um, so if you're talking about the um, web resources, it yeah, if you're doing a search in the library website, so if I, I'm just going to type book flicks. So it's on its own resources page, but it's also indexed within the website search. So you're able to find it multiple ways. It's one of the things I love about Aspen is there's multiple ways to do almost anything, and there's multiple ways to find almost anything. So wherever your patrons are used to and comfortable exploring, um, there are ways to promote those resources. Can you do that same search just under catalog search and let's see if it shows up during yeah. and explore more, it should. I bet you it will. Oh no. It's gonna take a minute for it to, there, it should populate. Aha, there we go. So yeah, we have some results there from EBSCO. Interesting. All right. 
I hope that answered your question, Felicia. Are there any other questions before we go today? I don't see any more. Okay. We do have a um, another webinar in this series coming up. That's going to be on March 27th, 4 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on accessibility and usability with Aspen Discovery. I think Jordan's doing that one, so it should be a really mm -hmm. good webinar. And then if anybody has questions, um, you can contact us through support, or uh, you can contact me, Bill, at uh, bywatersolutions.com, and I'll get it to everybody, too. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming today. Um, definitely, again, reach out to us via support or reach out to Bill at bywatersolutions.com. If you're not a current library partner, we would love to talk to you. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> thank you all. Bye.